I just discovered that bag has that pocket and I've had it for like a couple months now. Also, it's snowing. What is going on everyone? So it is springtime now and despite the snow that is falling outside here in Northern Michigan, for me that usually means one thing. I'm taking a lot of photos. I, it is, people are graduating high school, people are graduating college, people are getting engaged and all of that means for me, clients. Now, despite the fact that we are in quarantine, that is not happening. So, <laughs> been pretty not very busy lately and that's why I'm making a lot of these YouTube videos but I thought it'd be a perfect time to run you through my setup I kind of bring with me when I go on a portrait shoot specifically going out to take photos of people or even if I'm just at an event or if I'm really bringing just more than one camera but not all my gear I keep it pretty minimal and the bag I use that kind of makes all of this happen is this this is the peak design five liter slain bag. It is a killer, killer bag. It is a, like every Peak Design product, if you're not familiar with them, they are amazing. They are super well designed, super detail oriented, very comfortable, very ergonomic. You know, I kind of let this be my camera strap. I usually have a camera in my hand and I don't like to fumble with the strap on it if it's in my hand. And then I let this, if I need to put the camera away, I, I can put it in here. Normally in the past, I have used a big, big camera when I am on portrait shoots. I use a Fujifilm series camera, whatever the newest one is, with a battery grip, and I've used big lenses in the past to take a lot of my portraits. And what I've learned is, that's very intimidating. And I know that's the super standard, you go to get your photo taken by a photographer and they whip out their huge camera that they have, and you're like, whoa, this guy knows what he's doing, but you also get very intimidating. And for me, that tool lately has been the Fujifilm X-Pro3. Now this is a very small range finder style camera and it is, I've just fallen in love with this thing since I use it. And now anytime I'm pretty much going to take photos specifically, this is, this is the camera I use. And I just let the X-T3 be for video and like studio type work. On the camera, usually when I'm taking portraits, my main, my go-to lens has always been something close to a 80, 77 to 80 millimeter equivalent. And on here, that is the 50 millimeter. And I actually use the F2 version. And I use the F2 version for pretty much all of my lenses. I had the super, super expensive F1.4 versions of all their prime lenses. And they're amazing, but they are two things. They are bigger, they're usually not weather sealed, and they're a little slow sometimes. You know, that big aperture getting that little extra bit of bokeh I've noticed just isn't worth it. You know, you get a photo that's per well composed and the colors look good, and that little bit of bokeh that you're supposed to get that makes you makes it look good just isn't worth it. You know, if anything, I have sh I have trouble getting an image sharp at such a shallow depth of field. So, f2 works good, and especially with this camera, the IAF and eye tracking is phenomenal. So I, I truly trust this. I know I'm going to nail the shot. I know I'm going to nail the focus right on the eye, and. Uh, not only that, with this camera, it's super unintimidating. It's very, it's small, it's kinda, it's this retro looking form factor. And if anything, that usually starts more of a conversation, helps people relax in the, in the scheme of taking their, having their photo taken, which a lot, most people are very uncomfortable with. Especially when I'm doing like high school graduation type photos, teenagers are usually, especially, they feel awkward enough having their photo taken. And this just kinda breaks the ice a little bit. So. With this, like I said, I use all of the Fujifilm F2 series lenses. So they're smaller, they're weather sealed, and I keep them all in the bag. Now, on the right side, I keep the 35 millimeter F2, which is a 50 millimeter equivalent, super classic, great focal length. You know, this is, this is probably the least used lens in my kit, but it is super, it kind of always has this purpose of grabbing 
three or four photos in every photo shoot that I feel like if I didn't have it, I'd be missing something in the whole series of images. Also, I do not use lens caps on any of these lenses, especially if they're in a bag. I feel like they're safe enough. You know, this bag is soft. It's, it's a camera bag. It's soft inside. It's stuff's meant to not scratch it. So I don't really worry about it. I change lenses pretty quick and that's that. On the left side, normally I would have one more lens right here and that's the lens you are looking at. That is the 16 millimeter F 1.4. Now I use this typically to get wide shots and it's an awesome wide contextual grabbing details of like maybe a class rain or something like that. So wide, super shallow depth of field. That is the only F 1.4 series because at that wide angle, I think that is just a killer focal length, super kind of unique look. I, I don't think a lot of photographers that do portraits go that wide. So that's the only other lens that's not in this bag currently. Then under that, I would have the 23 millimeter F2. Good middle of the road. I use this a lot actually, and I'm, I'm always surprised at how much I use it. You know, it's a, it's not super, super shallow depth of field at F2 for this focal length, but it's uh, not very tight. It's a 35 millimeter equivalent. I use this to kind of capture the candid moments. I know I always nails focus. It's not too wide of an aperture. And this is, this is my, I call this my candid lens. This is, this is for, uh, this is wide angle action. So you got, you know, your classic portrait lens, your kind of middle, mid range lens. I call this my action lens. And then your wide and contextual lens, which you're looking at right here. Then in the bag up top here, what do I have? I have two batteries because this camera doesn't have a battery grip. And I want to make sure I can make through the whole photo shoot with enough power, keep two extra batteries. Always keep AirPods in here because you never know what you're doing if you're waiting for a client or waiting for someone. Pretty much can't live without these things. They're the greatest invention from Apple ever. On the right of the bag, I have extra SD cards. Now I have two 128 gigabyte cards in the camera. I very rarely have any issues with storage, but you never know, a card could fail. There could be a weird write error. And you know, when someone's paying you for their time, you wanna make sure you're prepared and you don't wanna have to rescheduled because your SD card failed or you forgot to dump it and they're full, which has happened to me before. So keep a few extra SD cards in here. Nothing real crazy though. And then up top here, I have this little dongle thing, which is awesome. You can plug an SD card in and it's USB type C, which plugs into an iPad, the new iPad Pro. It's not the newest one because Apple comes out with a new device, what seems like every month, but this has been a super big addition to my editing and workflow process. Also, have a nice Bryce Heidel sticker on here so you can never mistake whose it is. This is great to bring with you if you're doing a client shoot after they always wanna see photos or if you're having someone who's really struggling with like relaxing and posing well, you can show them on a big screen, show them what they look like. A lot of times with portraits of people who are younger, there's a lot of editing that goes into like acne and making people look the way that they feel like they want to look. And you know what, when you blow it up big, you can also reassure to them, you can edit this, this, and this out in a photo, you know, and they feel more comfortable with knowing what they're gonna look like and what they're gonna get. Also, you can go through photos with a client and make sure that they are super happy with all the images that they have and they have a really good idea of what they paid for. And especially for me, when I'm running around, if I'm at an event, I can whip this out, plug it in, dump cards on here to a hard drive, which I also bring with me. And you know, you can, you can edit photos really quickly on the go. Lightroom Mobile and Photoshop are now on the iPad and they are killer. I just have presets in there. I can edit stuff super fast. You can touch up, it's super organic with the Apple Pencil, which I keep in this top little pocket also because it kind of falls off when it's just in there and dangles around. But like I said, in this front pocket, which I'm not gonna lie, I did not know was on this bag until today. <laughs> I've had it for months now and I had no idea there was this front little pocket. It was zipped up and the zipper was just like hidden and one day it finally fell down. But I keep a hard drive. I think it's a Seatgate one. I'm not particularly brand loyal to any one hard drive. Anything that hasn't failed me is a win in my book and I haven't had any issues with these. Type C cable so I can plug it into the iPad and I can dump cards and backup footage and make sure I have plenty of card space, stuff secure on a hard drive. I have two copies of it and it's all good. 
So that's really it. This is this is my super minimal camera setup that I bring with me when I'm taking photos for clients and taking pictures of people or just running around taking a lot of photos. You know, Peak Design Bag is a super, super, super simple way to do that. And I like it. It's better than a gigantic, huge satchel or backpack that a lot of photographers bring with them, including me. I did it for a year. I had a huge satchel bag, which I, you know, pulled things out of, had big 7200 equivalents, my big cameras, and big lenses. And it did two things. It intimidated people and it was heavy and I didn't really feel like the images were that much better. You know, even recently, I've even downscaled more. I used to have another 90 millimeter lens, 90 millimeter F2. I got rid of that. It's just the look I got from it just wasn't worth a few images. So I keep it super simple. Four lenses, including the one you're seeing. And that's it. You know, it's... I'm not the type of guy to carry two cameras with like the double strap harness thing that some people wear and just like switch back and forth because I'm typically very nimble. I like to crawl into fun little spots and get the shots or I'm actually like on the move enough that it's just not worth it. It's just easier for me to switch lenses. So that's it. I hope this was helpful. And if you're trying to get into like portraits and things like that, this is the setup I use. For me, I think it's important that people know you don't always have to meet the standardized look of what every photographer looks like out there. Because I know when I had my photos taken for when I was graduating high school or just throughout my life, you uh, you do feel intimidated by a photographer. And I try to keep it super minimal in a way that keeps people comfortable. And I can also still capture great images. I hope this quarantine ends sooner rather than later so we can all get out and take some photos. See you guys next time. Oh, 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 oh,